so I'm going to do a couple of the reactions from your lab. Uh, show you how to predict the products with double replacements, how to predict if you're going to form a precipitate, and with the single replacements, how you're going to predict if the reaction will happen in the first place. So first off, we're going to start with some double replacements. Whoa. Double replacements. We'll do NaCl plus CuSO4. And let's do NaOH plus AgNO3. And one more, how about lead nitrate plus potassium iodide. <coughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is predict our products. So whenever you're doing a double replacement, you want to make sure that you swap elements that are similar. So swap positive guys or you can swap the negative guys. I just tend out of habit and for ease to swap the positive guys. So that's who I'm going to swap here. So I'm going to swap all the guys that I just put in blue. So copper is now going to go with chlorine. And to appropriately write the compound, I have to know the charges on both of these guys. Well, I know that chlorine is a negative one. And I'm looking at copper and I'm seeing that copper is bonded to sulfate. Well, sulfate's a negative two, which means copper has to be a plus two. So when I write the compound for copper chloride, it has to be CuCl2. The two on the chlorine coming from the charge of the two on the copper. And then for sodium sulfate, I know that sodium is a plus one, sulfate is a minus two, so that means I need two sodiums to every sulfate. And then we'll come back and balance this in just a second. Coming on to this one, swapping my sodium and my silver. Again, I need to know the charges. Well, sodium is a plus one. Hydroxide is a minus one. Silver is always a plus one. Nitrate is a minus one. Super nice when the charges line up like this. So I can just swap them. And I get silver hydroxide and sodium nitrate. On the bottom one, swapping lead with potassium. I'm looking at lead and I see that I have two nitrates. Well, each nitrate's a negative one, which means overall I've got a negative two charge, so that means lead has to be a plus two. Potassium, always a positive one. Iodine, in this case, is a negative one. So swapping these guys out, I'm gonna put together potassium and nitrate, and it's a plus one and a minus one, so I just put them together with no subscripts, additional subscripts. You got the three for the nitrate. And then putting together lead iodide, Lead's a plus two, iodine's a minus one, so we need P, B, I, two. Now we can come back and balance them. <clears throat> so I'm looking here, I got one sodium, I got two sodium, so I need to put a two out here. That means, going on to my next um, metal, I have one copper, one copper, so we're good. Next up in the balancing, don't forget Mino, because it helps. So we just did our metals, now let's do our ions. We have one sulfate, we have one sulfate, so that one's good. No more uh, ions, so I'm going to move on to my non-metals that are not oxygen or hydrogen, which just happens to be chlorine. So I have two chlorines, and I have two chlorines. So we're good. That one is balanced just by putting a two right there. Moving on to the next one. Starting out with my metals, I have one sodium, one sodium. My next metal is silver, one and one. Then my ions, I've got one hydroxide, one hydroxide. Nah, oh, and then I've got one nitrate, one nitrate. So that one is just naturally balanced. Moving on to the last reaction, starting with my metals. I have one lead, one lead. That one's good. Got one potassium, one potassium. That one's good. My ions, I have one nitrate. Oh, sorry, two nitrates. I have one nitrate. So I need to put a two out here. And then moving on to my non-metals, I have two iodines over here. I only have one over here. So I need to put a two right there. And then if you notice, I changed my number of potassiums, but I also changed it over here. So that ends up balancing out anyways. Now the last thing that we have to do is look at these products and see if any of them, according to the solubility rules, are going to be a precipitate. And if it is gonna be a precipitate, I'm gonna go ahead and put a nice little box around it. I'm looking at my rules. Uh, and pause this and check this, because I'm gonna go through this pretty quick. 
<clears throat> copper chloride. I see that most chlorides are soluble. Exceptions are lead, silver, and mercury. Well, this is not lead, silver, or mercury, so this will dissolve. Sodium sulfate. Sodium compounds are soluble, so this will not dissolve. So in actuality, if I were to mix these two chemicals, I would have no reaction. It would look like nothing happened. Coming over here. Um, silver hydroxide, I know that my group 1 hydroxides are soluble, group 2 hydroxides are slightly soluble, and transition metal hydroxides are not soluble, so that means this is going to be a solid. And then my sodium nitrate, sodium compounds are soluble, so it's going to stay aqueous. So this is the guy that will show up in solution. Last one, uh, looking at potassium nitrate, I know that potassium compounds are soluble, so that's going to stay dissolved lead iodide. Looking at my rules, I see that most halides, iodine is a halide, are soluble except lead, silver, or mercury. So this will form a solid and it is a precipitate. Now moving on to the single replacement reactions. We'll do one from each section. Let's do Al plus HCl. We can do um, zinc plus copper sulfate. Um, let's do um, lead with zinc nitrate. And how about copper with lead nitrate? So again, first thing we have to do is write the charges on everything. Aluminum will become a plus three. Right now, hydrogen's a plus one, chlorine's minus one, zinc is a plus two. Copper in this case, since sulfate is a negative two, that means copper has to be a plus two. Lead, not sure what it's gonna do. I told you guys to go ahead and assume that lead in this case is gonna do a plus two, uh, but it could be a plus four. <clears throat> Nitrate here is a negative one, which means that zinc is a plus two. It's always a plus two. Copper again, I told you just to go ahead and assume a plus two. Uh, in this case, nitrate is a, totals out to be a negative two, so that means lead has to be a plus two. So first we're gonna predict what would happen. Well, the positives are gonna swap places, so we're gonna end up with aluminum chloride, AlCl3. This three comes from the fact that aluminum has a plus three charge, plus hydrogen gas, and hydrogen is Brinkelhoff, so it's H2 swap these two guys. Swapping a plus two for a plus two means you don't really have to do anything. Just rewrite it. Zinc, sulfate, plus copper. Same thing here. Swapping a plus two for a plus two. Lead, nitrate, plus zinc. And last one, we're going to get uh, copper nitrate, plus lead. So now we have to look at the activity series to see if these guys are actually even going to happen. So I'm gonna look. Since I'm trying to swap aluminum with hydrogen, I'm gonna look at my list. Is aluminum higher on the list than hydrogen? Yes, it is, so that means I need to balance this thing. So I got one aluminum, one aluminum, one chlorine, three chlorine, so I'm gonna put a three right here. And then I have three hydrogens two hydrogens, well least common multiple of three and two is six. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this guy to a six, which means I need to change this guy to a three. Now I changed my number of chlorines, so I need to put a two here and a two here. Next reaction is zinc and copper. I need to see is zinc higher than copper? It is, so this reaction also will happen. And because all the charges are the same, this one is naturally balanced, so everything checks out. Down here, I need to see if lead is higher than zinc. And no, as a matter of fact, lead is not higher than zinc, so this will not happen. Last one, copper and lead. I need to see if copper is higher up than lead, and it is not. So this reaction also will not happen. So we don't need to balance it. And that, ladies and gents, is how you predict products. If you have any questions, feel free to come on in tomorrow morning and actually, no, not tomorrow morning. Um, ask them during class during the lab. So y'all have a great night.